This is Trend Following Radio, where great thinking comes alive. Nobel Prize winners, legendary traders, best-selling authors, and the pros that know what drive us irrational human beings. I am your host, Michael Covell. Not filtered, raw, honest. That's my passion. Such a cool song, isn't it? I sometimes feel like I'm floating above and looking down. You know, you want to have people to relate to and share with and get them to see the same vantage point at which you see. Um, but uh, for a lot of folks, that's difficult. And I think the concept that I was thinking about, I wanted to start this uh, podcast off today with a segment, and I've talked about this before, and I featured it in my film, Broke, the notion of the lottery, the idea that you don't have to do any work and you just make a bet, some limited bet that takes none of your time, every, a very small portion of your money. You make a limited bet and then you can imagine that your entire world will change in a monetarily way. I don't think monetarily is not a word, but in a monetary way, your entire world will change by making this one bet. And... You can see this concept of a lottery society beyond just the notion of buying the scratch off. Let's take, for example, the presidential debate last night, Obama, Romney. It's a lottery mentality to believe that your vote alone will give you some stupendous result. I'm voting for Obama. I'm voting for Romney. And then when my guy gets elected, my entire world is going to change. It's kind of like a lottery ticket, right? It's, it's, it doesn't work that way, but it's kind of like a lottery ticket. So think about how many different ways in society right now we have pushed aside the notion of work, purposeful, driven, consistent effort along a continuous path to one end. And we've, we've excluded that for this lottery mentality. Uh, what's another great example? American Idol, X Factor. People love these shows. And you go from zero to 60 if you're the winner and your life supposedly changes. Because, and then take it a step further, reality shows. Right? You get on a reality show, if you don't have anything, let's say you just, let's say you're out there right now and, and you're kind of in a, a, a state of, you're not really sure which direction to turn. Maybe you, you work for the man. Maybe you don't have the money that you have. Or maybe you work for the man and he pays you a lot, but it's golden handcuffs and you've got no freedom. You know, maybe you're paid a half million a year to work for the man, but you got to wake up every day and say yes, sir, to a blank hole. So either way, you still don't have freedom. But all these, these lottery concepts in society make people feel like, well, you can just spend a little bit and get this huge return. Uh, so the reality shows do that. Uh, what else? I mean, look at drugs and alcohol. I'm not trying to be some uh, prude, but the reality is you take a drug or you take alcohol and the, the hope is almost like the lottery that everything will change by doing that. You know, it doesn't work that way. And there's a bunch of great posts that I want to talk about from the author, Seth Godin. And but to blend this into this is a, this opening idea of this lottery thinking. And let's face it, why do I bring this up? Because this is, if you're going to move down the path of successfully becoming a trend-following trader, or frankly, a successful anything, it's the six inches between your ears. I can give you the rules, and I do, but it's ultimately the six inches between your ears. So it's kind of the wishing-doing gap, Right? It would be great to be picked. Let me be picked. I'm picked on American Idol. I'm picked on X Factor. I'm picked to be Kardashian's newest boy toy. I'm picked, I'm picked, I'm picked. You don't have to work. You're just picked. Now, these are great to have this, quote, dream come true. But how do we even get to the point where being picked to be a lottery winner is actually a dream versus sitting down and creating something? 
creating something from scratch that you create, you make happen. Maybe you're not famous. Maybe you are famous. It's really, it's irre- it's not relevant. What's relevant is, are you in control of it? Are you in control of, see, this kind of mentality is the same way. So if you think about the lottery type thinking, the lottery type thinking is very much like fundamental analysis. It's just all, it's all just a big gamble. Whereas trend following is kind of like, hold on, let's take a step back. What can we control? But think about this also, and this is coming from Godin. It says, but when we rely on a wish to get where we want to go, we often sacrifice the effort that might make it more likely that we get what we actually need. Waiting for the prince to show up is a waste of valuable time, and the waiting distracts us from and devalues the hard work we might be doing instead. If you could influence the outcome, do the work. If you can't influence the outcome, ignore the possibility. It's merely a distraction. All the things I'm discussing, this lottery mentality is a distraction from you saying, oh, I'm going to properly trade. I'm going to properly be a trend following trader. I'm going to properly be an entrepreneur. I'm properly going to fall in love. I'm properly going to do whatever it is. See, we're in this, this and I've, I've talked about it a lot, but we're in this, this fantastic world of distraction. And the lottery mentality is just a continuation of that distraction. But see, here's the thing. People don't, they don't want to admit this. It's more interesting to deny the, the real world around them. If you, if you can deny the real world, if you can deny the real work, you can just stay in this kind of like future fantasy land. I mean, here's a great example also. Gandhi didn't pretend the British weren't dominating his country. Right? He knew they were. And Godin goes on to say, he says, it's okay to say this is going to be difficult. It's productive to point it out. Our product isn't as good as it should be yet. That's an example from a business perspective he's doing. But the point is, it's you can't deny the facts that you don't like. And see what the lottery mentality does, the lottery mentality, and however you want to apply it, gives people the opportunity to ignore the facts they don't like. And here's my argument. The facts that you don't like are probably the facts that you should like because they're actually going to make you feel better and have a more interesting life. This is true. This is the bottom line. This is true. So how do we get ahead and how do you get past? How do you get past some of this? Well, you have to be curious. You have to be curious how the system really works. You know, it's the, f- the famous Lawrence Fishburne line from The Matrix, the red pill, blue pill be curious if you're not curious it's at your own peril look if you're not sure if it's going to work try it if it doesn't make sense play with it until it does if someone says oh that's not going to work you can't do that prove them wrong if you don't have that attitude you can't be successful in anything And sure as heck not trend following. You have to have this attitude. If you're just sitting there like a bump on a log and I get these emails from people and it's like, oh, if I, if I, if I train with you or if I learn from something for you, can can you guarantee me this performance? Look, man, if you are seriously writing me asking for me to guarantee you performance, why don't you just take your money and burn it? That's a better thing to do with your money. Writing Mike Covell an email saying, can I guarantee you performance? Just go outside, go to the Ace Hardware store, get a bucket of, you know, charcoal lighter, light your money on fire and sit around, burn all your money. And then if you got a few bucks left, you can go buy a lottery ticket. Right? There aren't any guarantees in life. Life's not fair. If you were sitting around watching the United States presidential debate last night and you were rooting on your guy thinking that when your guy, the one man, is going to get elected and change your life, are you serious? Come on now. You really don't think like that. I don't really want to think you're that crazy. I'm not that crazy. Um, But then I further get people come at me and they're kind of like, well, Mike, if if I get on the side of where you're going, and I acknowledge that it's obvious that what you're saying is true. 
And if I, if you, if I learn from you, if I listen to you, if I, if I interact with you, you know, you're telling me that you can teach me what you know. But the real question I think a lot of people have that they don't admit is once they know what I know, will it, will it be obvious? Or, or is, is Mike Covell just, uh, you know, the Jim Jones of trend following? Some Kool-Aid drinking lunatic who just talks a mean game, uh, knows how to put some words together, can phrase the sentences correctly, but it's really just... Uh, it's really just me putting you into some kind of narcoleptic state where you just follow my words and the words don't really mean anything and you're now part of the Covell cult. I'm sure there's some people out there like that that perhaps don't really look at the truth of the words. Maybe they get caught up in uh, something else. But that's the great thing is if you, if you do get, if you put yourself, if you, if you allow yourself the time to say, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get into this new kind of material. For example, looking at price data as a cue to make market decisions. If you're going to allow yourself to go there, it becomes obvious if you want it to become obvious. If you want it to be mystical, it'll remain mystical. For example, I have people that will write me. And um, they understand trend following, or at least they've let on that they understand trend following. And then they'll say, well, should I read this book on short-term trading? Or should I do point and figure? Uh, or should I understand head and shoulders? Or should I understand candlesticks? Should I understand WD GAN? And like, you're thinking, you're, I'm thinking to myself, well, hold on, we've already gone down the trend following path. Why do you need something extra? You've already made the decision that trend following is something good for you. And now you're trying to bastardize it with all kinds of other nonsense on top, all kinds of other layers. It's like if I've got to the point with eating sushi, right? If you give me really, really good sushi, uh, I really don't want any wasabi. I don't really even want soy sauce. Just give me good freaking sushi. I don't need anything on it. I don't need it to be covered in something. Just give me good sushi. If you have good trend following, it doesn't have to be covered in anything. It's just what it is. You should be happy about that. But I, I won't, I will not solve this issue in this particular podcast. Um, but, uh, people want things complicated. And I mentioned this in the last podcast. The complication makes them, uh, feel good. Complication makes them feel complete. Uh, if they can, if they can, uh, do some statistical, uh, jargon or whatnot, um, that's great. Look, you know, it's funny. In the last couple of years, I used to go around to quite a few fundamental analysis websites because, you know, these guys that run the, fun, you know, the fundamental analysis blogs, uh, they have to write something current every day. They have to give you uh, either their own words or somebody else's words that describe what's going on for that freaking day. And so I would go to a lot of these websites, and some of these guys are my friends. I mean, I like them. They're good people. I just drastically differ with their, their view of how uh, the world operates and where they come from the standpoint of, like, I can control this. I can analyze all this information on a, on a nonstop daily basis. And by analyzing this information on a nonstop daily basis, I can then somehow or another make good buy-sell decisions betting decisions and portfolio selection decisions. It's all nonsensical. But anyways, my point is, is I would over the last couple of years, I would go to these websites for maybe inspiration about what to talk about, you know, to kind of contrast with trend following. I can barely do it anymore because you go there and it's just tired. It's tired, right? The idea that you can somehow or another explain or give a view off about everything that's happening every day and you are the guy that that is the, the leader of the pack and 
as the leader of the pack, you can describe everything and you can give your followers what to do. And, and all these 20 something guys that have got way too much testosterone and they think they're really smart kind of come in and give their comment all day long. I mean, I don't know about, I mean, look, I'll go into Facebook and I'll, I'll make some posts and stuff, but I really, the, the idea of getting in chat rooms and the concept of chat room has been reduced to constant Facebook posting or constant blog posting zero hedge, you name it, whatever. I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm just saying, but the, the idea that you are participating every day by offering your content or your comment to debate with other unknown anonymous people, uh, really? It, it, is that fun? Is it productive? Or is it just some type of mental masturbation? That's... I think everyone's afraid to say that. Everyone's afraid to say that a huge segment of the population is literally just twiddling their thumbs, doing nothing. I mean, think about the concept of the iPhone. I love Apple products, users since the early 1990s. Don't have an iPhone. I've talked about this on Facebook. I guess eventually I'll be connected to the matrix or something. But I'm I, as of right now, I'm trying not to be tracked by the GPS beast. Um, but think about what this has done to society. Is really, do, do you really think that everyone's more productive with this tool? Do you really think everyone's using this tool to its fullest capability of what it can do? Of course not. It's just like when you have Microsoft Office. You're never going to use half the stuff in that damn software. It's bloatware. The iPhone is bloatware too. You're never going to use it all. It's got more capability just like your average Mac has got more capability than you're ever going to use. But we're all addicted to it. We're all addicted to it. And it's just, once again, it's a distraction. Here's, and let me, as I talk about distraction further, this is a post that I caught from someone's site and it called How to Create Time. It said, clocks and calendars are my enemy, but time is my friend. If I could have anything in the world, it'd be more time, right? That's the key. So how do you create more time? Because we've already taught, we've got a trading system, right? We've got a worldview of trend following. You know it works. You put your trend following plan in motion. And hopefully you can have more time. So how do you go about creating time? Eliminate or reduce media, TV, for starters computers, constant surfing. I, I have to say, I'm not really into surfing for surfing's sake. I'm into surfing because it helps me to gather information to then make the case for trend following. I'm passionate about making the case for trend following and spreading that message. So my, it's really not surfing for surfing's sake. It's more surfing for research's sake so I can create these messages. But even that, I get tired of that uh, to some extent too. Work offline. Find out what you're going to comment on. Is get offline. Don't be connected all the time. Do less. Eliminate activities that require you to be, to be around people you can't stand. That's a good idea, right? Why be around anybody you can't stand? Why have any drama in life? Trend following is the no drama trading strategy. No drama. No drama mama. That's all you want. Don't make appointments or schedule meetings. I'm pretty good about this. If somebody wants me to come speak in a foreign country and say, hey, Mike, here's a plane ticket. Come on over. Yeah, I'll go do that. That's fun stuff. But appointments and meetings and conference calls. I mean, you know, you know who you are out there. I'm not going to call you out personally, but, you know, there's a lot of folks out there. They got freaking all these little calendar programs and this and that. I mean, I'll have a, I'll have a conversation with a guy I haven't talked to for a long while and uh, we'll say, well, let's just have a conversation at, you know, Friday morning. I get all kinds of little calendar announcements and multiple emails and assistants contacting me. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I don't, what do I need all this stuff for? Kind of, kind of similar to fundamental analysis. What do you need all this stuff for? Just pick up the phone and just, let's just talk. That's, it's real simple. We don't need all the complication. Like I, I anyways. Make time less precious. We are way too efficient making use of every hour, every minute. 
when you were when you were a kid, didn't you just spend hours, uh, you know, poking sticks in the mud, climbing trees, and sitting in them? I, I kind of do that today to some degree. I think that's my that's my way. I I'd prefer to do that. I would prefer to. Well, I guess there's sides of me that are somewhat. Uh, I shouldn't go there. I'll have to steer clear of that. This is a. This is a. I think I've had one uh, explicit because I use the f bomb in it. One explicit podcast, but and that was so f bomb equals just that's just PG thirteen. I can't go. Uh, I don't want to go past. Uh, I don't want to go to NC seventeen. So I have to steer clear of that. Um, but you know, as I wrap that up, I you know, it's just I just want people to follow along with where we are as a society. How can you get around all this distraction? How can you get around the lottery mentality and have a better life, have more time? It's a heck of a lot more interesting to figure out a world to where uh, maybe we can, you can go explore ruins in, uh, in Southeast Asia than it is planning about how fast you can get to Walmart on a Saturday morning. I'm just saying. Everybody wants a hero these days, and the hero du jour right now is Ben Bernanke, chairman of the Federal Reserve. And it's amazing right now that I don't think most people have a clue as to really who he is or what he does or what the Fed does. And it's real simple right now. There are no interest rates in any money that you've saved in the last year, two years, five years, 20 years, you don't get any money for. I mean, literally you get millions in the bank and you know, there's no interest. So when you have rates artificially reduced to zero, it really forces the hand of people. It says, you have to do something with your money that you would otherwise not do with your money. That's what's going on. So what are people otherwise doing with their money that they would not do if rates were not set to zero? primarily investing in the stock market, putting money into the stock market. Their hand has been forced. So let me add the disclaimer really quick so people know where I'm coming from as a guy that supports trend following. Clearly, what I've just said in the last 30 seconds is not necessarily relevant to trend following. Well, it's not. It's not relevant at all. I will say this, though, that, and I gave an interview for them a couple years ago, but the Reason Foundation is a libertarian think tank out of Los Angeles. Uh, for a long time, Bill Dunn, a trend following trader, was the chairman. He's still on the board of directors. And Richard Dennis, the father of the turtles, is on the Reason Foundation board of directors. So I don't think it's unusual that people that come from a trend following perspective actually want to see the world go in the right direction. So my commentary here is not necessarily to try and give you a uh, a grand trend following reason. I'm just kind of describing the world that we see. And I'll end it. I'll bring it back to trend following. So we know we're kind of at this, this artificial edifice, right? We're at this artificial place. And there's a guy who writes a, a blog post. His website is of two minds.com. His name is Charles Hugh Smith. And he had a post recently that caught my eye. It said, if you prop up an artificial economy long enough, does it become real? If you keep rates at zero and you can resuscitate the stock market, perhaps resuscitate the equity market, does it eventually become real? Meaning, is, is this time different? What's the line he's got in here that's just fantastic? 98% of mortgages are backed by federal agencies right now. 98%. The housing market in the United States of America has essentially become socialized. 98%. Now, I saw Sam Zell, billionaire property developer on TV the other day, and he was saying, you know, if we would have just let this thing correct itself, there would have been pain, but it wouldn't have been where we're at today, which is you know, zombie uh, short sales and zombie foreclosures and zombie this and zombie that and banks holding back supply. So you've just got this whole situation where the Fed has, has dropped the rates and, and rigged the system. Systems rigged. I mean, there's no, uh, 
There's no way around it. That's what we've got. So the question is, can it end up in a positive way? You know, essentially the idea is the wealth effect. And this was this was started also in 2003 by the Federal Reserve. I, I always find it quite humorous, and I'm not defending a politician, but, you know, the reality is the dot-com bubble, and I talk about this in my book, Trend Commandments, the dot-com bubble started under Bill Clinton. He was not responsible for it, but it started under Bill Clinton. It popped basically under George Bush. And while Bush becomes president in early 2003, the Fed lowers rates to 1%. When the Fed lowered rates to 1% in 2003, uh, Bush might as well have been a little kid sitting on a couch because he was no longer in control of anything. Because once the Fed dropped rates to 1% in 2003, what was on? Well, the biggest real estate bubble ever that then burst in 2008. Is anybody seeing a parallel? I'm not saying it's the same thing, but if you got rates at 0% right now, and they're telling you housing's going up and the stock market's going up. At what point in time do they raise rates? And what happens when they raise rates? When they raise rates, do we see the same thing that happened in the fall of 08? There is a certain cyclical mentality as to what they're doing. This boom-bust phase. It's a boom-bust phase that's basically organized by the invisible hand of the Federal Reserve. And it's not that invisible if you pay attention. This isn't good. Like I said, this is not a trend-following comment, but this is not a good situation. This is a highly unpredictable situation. And, you know, Smith goes on to say, it's not difficult to predict an eventual spike of instability in such a system. The only difficulty is predicting the date of the instability. Hiding a broken, dysfunctional economy behind a facade of artifice and illusion can't fix what's broken. It only adds to the system's systemic instability as resources that could have gone to actually fix things are squandered on propped up phony facades of growth and health. Right? It's not difficult to predict an eventual spike of instability in such a system. The only difficulty is predicting the date of the instability. So this is what I love about trend following and I love about the fact that Dunn and, and Dennis are on that board of directors. It allows you to frankly be on the right side of the argument from a societal standpoint. Zero rates, Fed manipulation, these things are not good. Not good at all. Bad for the economy. Bad for the country. But guess what? You can't predict anything. So what do you do? You can fight the good fight, and I do it a little bit. You can fight the good fight about pointing out what's wrong and perhaps how to fix it. But you can't trade the good fight. You cannot trade the good fight. You can't make money off the good fight because you can't predict it. You can't predict the timing. So this entire segment, I've been giving you a personal view, a view of how perhaps the world and the United States economy has been structured in a really kind of goofy way. And I, we can, we all know the reasons for it, but you're left with a situation of, you know it's bad, you know it's going to eventually pop, and you know it won't be pretty. So what do you do? How do you deal with it? How do you, and you know it's going to be a black swan that swims in and bites you on the ass. So how do you handle it? That's the great thing about trend following. Trend following is the only way you can handle this. Because I can offer you all the commentary in the world. And I can agree with Smith here on his article. I can offer you all the commentary in the world. It's not going to help you make money. All it's going to do is make you scared or uneasy. And, and maybe there's good reasons to be scared and uneasy. But from a trading perspective, you, can, you can't use this information. And he's honest about it in the very end of his article because he says he can't predict the timing. I mean, I love that about him. He's saying, I, look, I can't predict the timing. Trend following can't predict the timing either. But here's the trick. You don't have to be able to predict the timing to make money. I repeat, you do not have to be able to predict the future to make money. Second, nobody can predict the future. So if you don't have to be able to predict the future to make money, and nobody can predict the future, and the people that are telling you they can predict the future are full of it, 
once again, you're left with my my nice little trend-following world. Off to do yoga. I see a time when those awake will understand how to make money in up, down, and surprise markets. Whether new trader or experienced, college student or financial advisor, protecting against a crash or just trying to make a lot of money, Trend Following offers everyone an answer in uncertain times. To get started immediately, send me an email, michael at covell.com. I will send you the right trend following steps to take along with my free video. But if you want to buy and hold, trust the government and trust Wall Street. This is absolutely not for you.